This, my friends, is the Steel City 50150G bandsaw that the guys over at Steel City were nice enough to send me. I really need to thank them and Glenn especially for hooking me up with this saw. Can't wait to try it out and give it a run and let everybody know how it works. Uh, this is just going to be a video about assembling it and what I'm running up and down showing right now is essentially the way the saw comes out of the box. Last night I brought it home and brought it in and I've essentially just stood it up and cut the cardboard off of it. I've done no assembly yet. So you can see it's basically assembled. Having read the instructions after I stood it up I realized that maybe I should have put the mobile base on before I stood it up but I'll find my way through that. What it's standing on now is this little steel base it essentially comes in in the box. Um, but you can see that there's not much to do. I have to install one of the wheels there for the mobile base. The other two wheels are on the far side and set inside the base. I have to install the table which happens to be this nice table here and it's granite um, which I've not had a granite surface yet. I don't have a granite table saw or anything and I'm eager to try this out. I'll, I just need to throw the, t uh, the, the table onto the saw do a little bit of alignment for the blade guides and I think that's about it. It basically comes assembled. Oh, and I'm sorry, and I need to put the fence on. So that's kind of what the saw looks like. I'll come over here and I'll show you what I found to be an interesting thing. I'm not quite sure it's good or bad, but if you look at the blade guides here, it's got the ball bearing rollers on the sides, which um, which are fairly common these days. But the guide in the back, the axle is parallel with the direction of the cut. Um, so it's riding on the side of this bearing, not on the edge of the bearing. Uh, and I, I've seen lots of old saws, and I had an old saw that had blocks on the side that caught the blade and a bearing on its side like this. And I've seen lots of new saws. In fact, come over here to my my presently old saw, which has Carter guides on it, and uh, I don't know if you can see, move the box. You see how the Carter guide, it's running on its edge, not on its side. I think that's a lot of focus. Um, so this assembly I know works well. I know the other type works well, but I've never seen kind of a hybrid as you have here on the Steel City, where the rear bearing is on its side and yet you have bearings on the two sides of the blade rather than blocks. So I'm literally interested to see how this bearing assembly works and how the guide works and hopefully it controls the blade very well. But uh, we'll try that out once we get it assembled. For now I'm actually going to crack open the instructions and start putting, piece on, putting pieces on. The first thing the manual says to do is put the mobile base on, which is attaching the wheel that's going to go there. And to do that, I need to take it off this little frame it chipped on. So to take the frame off, I'm removing these screws, or the bolts rather, excuse me. So now I've got the, the wheel on for the mobile base, and that'll push it down, or let it come up. Uh, down underneath here, I put these little feet on. i got a foot here and a foot over here. If you look underneath, can you see, um, if we look over here, you can see there's a, there are the wheels that stick out. So, um, as I said, the manual shows this happening when the machine is still on its side. Uh, I didn't do that, so now I'm going to go through the effort of getting the machine off this steel frame that it comes on. But uh, this is the first step of installation done, the mobile base setup that I got the mobile base on. And uh, it's a little tricky to get it off that steel thing it chipped on, but not too bad. And you can see here, I'm just cramming it with one arm, moving it around. Moves pretty nicely on the OSB floor. And then uh, bring the wheel down. I have to adjust those feet a little bit to, to stop it from wiggling, but I know one of the feet I installed is, is not even with the other one, so I think that's probably it. So that's step one done. I'm going to move on to the next part. Now it's starting to really look like a saw. Um, you can see I've got the granite top on, 
went on with no problem. It's a little bit on the heavy side, as you might imagine, but see the the bolts are pre-made in this half. Is this half of the trunnion? I think these are half of the trunnion too. Um, and I slipped it in. I covered the blade with blue tape so I wouldn't risk nicking the teeth that were on the blade when it arrived. Um, just dropped them through. Put on these nice big knobs, which some of the knobs are not quite as big as I'd like, but these knobs happen to be very big and grippy and are actually really nice. So um, I'm just resting it on the factory stop where it's set. And according to the factory stop, it's set to 90. It's a little out of focus, I'm sorry. Um, looks close. Shouldn't be a big deal to tweak it one way or the other. And the fact that it has a stop is kind of nice. So uh, I'm on to the next part. That's now the granite top on. Now that the top is on, the next thing I'm going to do is futz with blade tracking a little bit, but I just wanted to show what the wheel looks like. It's a nice cast iron wheel. Got a urethane tire in there. Red tire. Kind of interesting. It matches the red blade guard. So you got a black, red, and gray scheme. Um, nothing too exciting going on up here. It's a pretty standard wheel. Um, back here you've got your normal cast iron arm coming up and your tracking adjustment and your tension adjustment. Um, their newer version of this model has a quick release for the tension. Uh, this older one does not unfortunately. I think the newer version ends in a 5 instead of a 0. Um, as we come down the bottom, I'll open this one up too. And they just, the doors have these simple twists that just hook this peg here. Seems rather simple. Um, not that I ever had a problem with my old saw, but it seems like a very effective way to do it. Um, down here you've got the other cast iron wheel. In the corner you've got a 4 inch dust outlet. Um, up here you've got a nice little brush. Um, and the belt goes down into this part, which I can get to if I unscrew this faceplate, but this door doesn't easily remove. I think the only time you'd have to remove this door is when you're changing a belt. Um, I'll leave it on this belt for the time being, though my tendency with all my equipment has been to switch from the factory belts to link belts, so I may very well make that switch here. Um, so I'm now up to aligning the blade guides, and this is interesting. I talked before about how this bearing runs on its side rather than on its edge, which is different than most that have bearings down here. Um, but if I come around back, and I apologize, this seems a little blurry. Um, there are knobs here. There's a, a simple little twist here that locks it in. And these I can pull in and out, and I can twist. And you'll see it's set off off-center, almost like a cam. And let me try to hold this. There we go. As I twist it, you see how it moves in and out towards the blade. So I've never seen one that adjusts in that manner. I think it's kind of innovative. Hopefully it'll be a little bit easier. I'm not I'm not sure on that yet, but it's it's interesting and I thought that was a neat feature of the saw I wanted to note as I'm still putting it together. So next thing I'm going to do is align all these to the blade and then I think we're ready for the fence. I have to go back to the manual, but we're moving along. With the guides now assembled and adjusted, rather, um, the next thing to do is to adjust the belt tensioning. And if I open up the bottom, there's a bit of slack on this belt. You can see there's supposed to be a half inch of play. There's more like about an inch of play. So what I need to do, if I come around back, you can even see the motor is mounted way down here at the base, and that's uh, to give it a heavy, more weight at the bottom, give it, uh, make it more stable, lower the center of gravity. That's what I'm trying to say. It lowers the center of gravity. And you see the motor is on this angled piece, and there's four bolts here. So I need to loosen these bolts and shift the motor down until I get the tension on the belt right. And that sounds like it's going to be a little tedious, but I'll give it a try, and we'll see how that goes. Working on tensioning the belt, which is proving a little tedious. So one of the things I did was I removed the panel on this lower section. Uh, if I open the top, you can see how the belt runs through into the lower section. 
So a couple of nice surprises in here. Uh, I like these little triangles welded together to stiffen the base frame and the bottom brackets are all welded together. Seems a nice stiff assembly. I was nervous that when I took the front off it would dramatically weaken the stability of the base. And while I'm sure it is stronger with the front panel screwed on, there are three screws on both sides that hold it together, um, it's nice to see that inside they've done a bunch of welding and added stuff to make it nice and stiff. So now on with the process of tensioning that belt. I've got the blade tensioned as best as it's going to get. Um, just to show this assembly again, you've got this inclined plane here and the motor has four bolts. This makes tensioning it, frankly, a little hard because you've got a rather long axle, shaft, whatever we're going to call it, that attaches to the pulley or the bearing guide um, and the belt all the way at, at the end. And you can see when I squeeze the belt, you can see the motor out here. Not sure if you, yeah, you can see the motor moves. And the motor is tightened down very tightly now. Um, the other thing is that I'm trying to tension the belt, and the only way to slide the motor down is to put your hand on it and push. So it's hard to hold the motor down, keeping the belt in tension, and tighten these four bolts. These two down here are not hard to reach per se, but they're awkward, and um, the whole operation is a little testy. That being said, it's not something you're going to have to do often, so I don't really mind that it was a little little tedious because it's not as though I have to go through it every time I, I use the saw. Once the belt is tensioned, which hopefully it is properly tensioned now, it should give performance for quite a while before it needs to be redone. I know that you know when the belt kind of breaks in and stretches a little bit, I may have to adjust this, but even if I have to do it once or twice initially, it's not as though I'm doing this once a week. So. Um, again, this process a little tedious, but um, it's not something you do that often, so by no means a uh, deal killer. Still, not too bad. So let's turn it on. Pretty nice, smooth operation. Nice uh, startup. Pretty stable. I did just dial in the feet. Um, so there's no wobble in it at all, and uh, it's pretty impressively stable. And again, I'm very eager to see how well this granite top performs. So let me get set up and run a piece of wood through it. Cut two nice pieces. A um, little bit of pulsing with the blade in and out. I think that might just be the factory blade. I'll have to investigate that a little bit, but nothing... Nothing bad here. Nice, good cut. I was a little sloppy. I'm going to say that's more me than the saw. That's the saw now assembled and functional. And next I'm going to look at the fence. The saw is assembled. You see here is the fence. Um, took a couple minutes to figure out. Unfortunately it didn't come with instructions for the fence, but it was relatively straightforward. When I first walked over I said, oh gosh, there's no holes in the edge of that granite top. How on earth do I fasten the fence? And I took a quick duck underneath, and I saw that there are uh, essentially nuts set, probably in epoxy, I'm not sure, into the bottom of the fence. You've got two here in the front and two in the back. So the fence uses this Z piece, and there's a tube, a square tube here, much like on a table saw. And you've got a fence here. The fence has, I'm going to assume they're nylon slides on the front and these nylon screws here to bring it side to side. I, I honestly haven't checked to see if it's plumbed the table. I did check and it's running parallel with the miter slot which is nice to set the fence side to side. I, I would use these two, I'd loosen up these two bolts and, and twist it relative to the base. A um, little frustrating in terms of adjustment but that should adjust for, for drift but I like it just set parallel to the miter slot so that was nice that it came out of the factory that way um, and that's it it's a pretty straightforward fence nothing fancy uh, but as I came over I could not figure out what this was this was came mm -hmm. 
Well, anyway, that came like that, and this is a big, heavy <laughs> steel tube. So I'll show you in a second what I've finally figured out that's for. So that, I call it a tube, that's really a dowel, but that piece of steel fits into the fence like that, and this nice big knurled knob tightens it up, and it's a pivot point for resawing. And that's actually kind of nice because I know a lot of guys resaw using a pivot point like that, and this makes it pretty quick and easy and straightforward to do. So I take a step back. You can see there is the saw in its assembled form. All I need to do is put a bulb in that light, and it is complete. So thanks again, Steel City. What I plan to do is use the saw in my next project or two, and then at that point I'll be able to give a nice review of how it works and uh, what I like and don't like about it. But so far, a very straightforward saw to assemble. And as I've said multiple times, I'm really eager to try it out because I think that granite surface, uh, the granite tabletop, is pretty neat and seems to add a lot of mass to the saw. So that should be pretty exciting to use. So, so that's it. That's the Steel City 50150G saw fully assembled.